we're going to be given a few different functions and we want to find the domain. A quick reminder, the only functions that we have with domain issues are functions that have a log of x, an x underneath an even root, or an x in the denominator. And then we have our prescriptions, what should we do in that case. In all of the ones we're going to encounter right now, you'll notice that there is an x underneath the even root. And so what we're worried about is taking an even root of a negative number. So the remedy is to make sure we don't take a root of a negative number. What's underneath an even root is known as the radicand. So we're going to set the entire radicand greater than or equal to zero to make sure that what's under the root is positive or zero. So in this first one, I'm going to just identify what is in the radicand. In this one, it's only the x. The plus 3 is off to the side. So I'm going to set this x greater than or equal to 0. There's nothing to solve. So this is my domain. If I want to turn this into interval notation, I just made a little picture for you to um, help you with your interval notation. I can use the number zero or any number bigger than zero to substitute in here. And so that translates to bracket zero. Bracket keeps the number zero through infinity, everything to the right parenthesis. Okay, now in this example, What's underneath the square root is the x minus 2, not just plain x. So I'm worried about taking the square root of a negative number, and I don't want x minus 2 to become a negative number. So we're going to set the x minus 2 greater than or equal to 0 and solve. Add 2 to both sides, and x is greater than or equal to 2. So if I substitute the number 2 or any number bigger than 2 in here, I'm going to end up square rooting a positive number or 0. Since these are the numbers I can use, 2, including 2, and forever to the right, our domain is bracket 2 through positive infinity. Okay, last example. Okay, and this one, just identifying what's underneath the square root. The radicand is 14 minus 7x. So I'm going to take this 14 minus 7x and set it greater than or equal to 0. This is ensuring that I'm not going to square root a negative number. To solve this, I'm going to subtract 14. And then when you divide by negative 7, remember your inequality symbol flips over. So this is x is less than or equal to 2. The numbers I may substitute into this equation is the number 2 and anything smaller than 2. So for interval notation, looking at this from left to right, as far left as I can go is negative infinity. So parenthesis negative infinity up to the number 2. And then we're keeping the number 2, so bracket.